Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to another episode of The Voluntary Life. And this is another episode on entrepreneurship. And what I'd like to talk about today is making a profit. The move to profitability is such a vital part of any startup entrepreneur. And it's something that I struggled with and learned a huge amount from. And so I hope that this discussion is helpful for you. If you are starting a business, already running a business, or just want to make your business more profitable. Now, one of the issues that uh, I think is useful to acknowledge in looking at this subject is what a bad reputation uh, profit has in our culture. And a number of sort of sources of this come to mind for me. The first being religion, that because there is this... Um, suspicion of usury and interest and um, and greed um, and of suspicion of business in general um, in Christianity and, well, in all the major religions, really, that comes through in a general suspicion of the profit motive in our culture. And this gets a more intellectual treatment by Marx and by socialists in general, who view profit as being essentially theft. Um, the whole Marxist concept of surplus value is that profit is kind of basically that bit that workers create and entrepreneurs kind of steal. And this is um, very influential. This idea is sort of floating around in the culture. It is wrong on many grounds um, and you, you know, can read up about Austrian economics to understand what the problems of the surplus labor of value are and why it just doesn't make any sense at all. However, I, I just want to reference it for you as an entrepreneur because obviously you are working within a context of, of basically this, this whole question of profitability having a really bad reputation in the culture as a whole. And that's another one of these currents that you have to acknowledge and swim against. I mean, it is certainly true that there are dodgy profits, if you like. Um, those businesses that use the state to enforce monopolies and thereby charge higher prices than they would otherwise be able to do on a normal free market are making a profit, but the kind of profit that they're making is really enforced by the state giving them special privileges, like a monopoly on a particular service or... Um, the use of the legal system to in, to um, stamp out competition through, for example, intellectual property law and so forth. So it's certainly true that there are abusive companies that use uh, the legal process to, to make profits with the backing of state force. But that doesn't apply to small businesses, startup entrepreneurs, or the kind of people who are going to be listening to this podcast so, you know, and there's nothing inherently um, immoral at all in the profit motive. In fact, it's absolutely essential to both the success of your business and to the progress of the division of labor, the market system, and all the benefits that we see um, in civilization that come from that. So, but just coming back to you and your business, first of all. So, I think the interesting thing to point out, or what I experienced, um, in businesses, how surprising it is that the profit motive is not very widespread among entrepreneurs. There's a lot of people who are not in business to make a profit. I mean, I'm, obviously, I'm not talking about um, charities or not-for-profit uh, projects that are specifically not about that. But I mean, I actually mean in entrepreneurship, there are lots of people who are not in, in entrepreneurship to make a profit. And so I'll give you an example um, of that. One of the things that, that you will probably encounter are people who have what you might call lifestyle businesses, where they are running a business really for the lifestyle and the benefits that it can bring them as an individual. So, for example, um, early on in my working life, I worked or a guy who ran a company, and he uh, really enjoyed all the trappings of being a director. He enjoyed taking business class flights and staying in really nice hotels 
and spending a lot at the company's expense to fund a lifestyle that was really about what he found enjoyable rather than what the business needed. And this got to quite ridiculous um, proportions. The guy wanted to uh, spend a couple of years living in Australia, so he actually tried to convince the other directors um, that it would be good to open up an office, a subsidiary in Australia, basically just because he wanted to go there, um, not because there was a market that looked attractive or anything else. Um, and he found a lot of rationalizations for doing that, which uh, to me, it seems pretty obvious were really all about the fact that he wanted an extended um, holiday in Australia. So that's a kind of lifestyle business, um, which is not uh, running the company to make a profit. There's another kind of lifestyle business, um, which are people who are more interested in their art than they are in the success or profitability of their business. And this, I've seen um, lots of examples of this. I remember working with a, a fantastic designer who was a brilliant uh, landscape designer, actually. And, you know, she did great work. Um, but she clearly was interested in making an impact on the people in her profession, her professional colleagues, people in who would write about design and so forth to show what kind of work she did. And that, I believe, was far more important to her than the profitability of her projects and her business. And there are lots of people, particularly in design like this, who spend years um, really trying to demonstrate their art um, to, in particular, it seems to be often to their peers rather than to their clients. Um, architects can be like this a lot. Um, and they're more interested in that than they are in actually making a profit. And so they're not running their businesses on the profit motive. But I think the most important example of people who are running the business on something other than the profit motive and this is an example that I myself uh, fell victim to. And, you know, you have to, as a startup, you really have to watch out for this, is the people who are obsessed with growth at the expense of profitability. And this is the kind of approach where you measure the success of your company or your business by its size, particularly in headcount. Uh, maybe in revenue, but mostly in, in headcount. And that's the really dangerous measure as well. And you can see where this comes from. You know, as, as an entrepreneur, when you start, you have a startup, you've got to get something moving. You've got to get some sales going. You've got to do some projects. You've got to get something off the ground. So you're really focused on growth, on making it happen, on creating a business out of nothing. But the problem with that motivation is if you're not careful, then what it means is that you get focused on doing whatever it takes to grow rather than doing whatever it takes to make a profit. And so you have this thing where you measure your success by the number of people that you're employing and how big the business is getting. And, you know, we, we definitely in my business uh, thought about success in terms of growth early on. But I see this in particular in the corporate world where it's all about the number of warm bodies that you have in your business unit or your division of the corporation and so forth. That's really the measure of success. And that's what people aspire to do. And of course, it's what's visible. I mean, when people go to dinner parties or whatever, they get asked how many people work for them. And that's the kind of thing that, you know, if you're in corporate life, that that's what sounds good. Um, but it's really, really toxic for a business. And it really clouds your view of what really matters, which is the profit motive. To be fair, uh, it is true that there are strong incentives that push you towards growth. I mean, the main ones being the tax system and the state. And the fact that profit is taxed means that there's always a strong incentive to think about reinvesting profit into the business and uh, pushing for the growth of the company. This is why corporations grow, because the tax system fundamentally disincentivizes profitability and incentivizes growth um, of the business. You know, and it's also true 
that because it is cheaper if you are an entrepreneur to fund those parts of your lifestyle that you can fund through a business, then a lot of people do focus on how they can use the tax advantages um, of being incorporated. And, you know, that, again, can really uh, warp your incentives about where to uh, push your business. So the incentives are against you in this um, because of the state and what the state does. And that's something that, that uh, you have to bear in mind. And also that, you know, tax is a real thing. You've got to, you've got to really look at what the most efficient way to organize your business is in terms of, of tax. So that has to be said in terms of understanding these motivations. However, I want to share with you a um, quote, a saying that comes, I think it's from England, um, that one of my advisors uh, told me when I was uh, looking to sell my business um, and we were looking at valuing the business. And this quote made such an impact on me and I hope it helps you. And the quote is that turnover is vanity and profit is sanity. Turnover is vanity and profit is sanity. And what I take that to mean is that, you know, whereas people value their businesses in terms of how big they are, how many people they employ, the really rational value of a business is its profitability. And the metric of your business's health is its profitability. And if you can look at your business in that way, it makes such a difference to the way that you the way that you operate your business. If you can use the profit motive to actually make decisions about your business, it's the best guiding light that you can have uh, for the health of your business. If you don't have the profit motive, I guarantee you that your expenses will just rise to match or outpace your sales, your revenue. That's like a law. You know, it's only having, having the profit motive that will enable you to actually keep that in check and make any money out of what you're doing. Otherwise, you will be so involved in, you know, the excitement of growth that your expenses will always match whatever money you make. So the profit motive is what is going to stop you from falling into that trap. And this happened to me. When I started my business in the first couple of years, we struggled really, really hard um, to actually get the business going. And we did projects at cost, which was the right uh, decision to make to just to get something in the bag that we could show people what we were capable of. And then all of a sudden, after a couple of years, we started getting a lot of projects and we got a big project and we hired people and we went into a new office and we spent all this money. And before we knew it, we were so involved in growth that we weren't doing enough sales and we weren't making a profit and we had no, no cash reserves and we had to make some really difficult decisions. So that's when I really, really learned about the profit motive. So I'd like to just share a couple of thoughts with you about how you can make your business more profitable. And I mean, it's really difficult to think what to say without knowing the specifics of a business. So I can just talk about my own experience from my business. The first thing is what I've really already said. It's really just making a decision to actually guide all of your decision making by the profit motive. You know, it's really important that you are conscious and aware that that is your job in terms of working out where to take the business, what to spend money on, what to do. The first thing is really to focus on making that jump from being focused on growth to being focused on profit. And if you can do that, just that mental change itself, if you resolve to do something about profitability, that will help for sure. I mean, the second thing is, is kind of an obvious thing to say that, you know, you obviously you have to cut your expenses to significantly less than your revenue so that you have a margin, a profit margin. And it's kind of glib to say it that simply, but the two most important things that, that happened for me in terms of cutting expenses, number one is really encompassed in the phrase, 
expenses walk on two legs. And this is a lesson that I learned when we did have that initial growth after a couple of years and hired a whole bunch of people. And as an entrepreneur, you know, it's very exciting to hire people. You think, oh, other people believe in my dream too. We're going to make this happen. We're going to grow. Um, but actually, it's a huge amount of work. It's very difficult to do right. Uh, it can very easily go wrong. And people are the most important expense that you'll ever have. So the lesson that I learned early on is don't hire people. And I, I mean, literally just don't hire people until you absolutely, absolutely can't avoid it. You've got to hire someone to do something. Get to the point where it, it's so obvious that you desperately have to have somebody else doing something that you do hire someone. And, you know, once you have that mentality, then when you do hire, you'll do it for the right reasons and you'll do it because there's a very clear role to be fulfilled and because it's going to clearly help the business. Um, but, you know, if you're, if you're focused on growth, then the first thing you try and do is hire people all the time because that's sort of growing. But if you're focused on profit, hiring somebody is the last thing you want to do because it's so difficult and it costs so much money to employ someone um, and it's so risky uh, that you avoid it until the last minute. The second thing I did, which I can really recommend to you, um, is to find a detail-oriented person to go through your expenses with you one by one and talk to you about why are you spending this money on this? What is it for? Do you really need it? Now, I found this really helpful because I am not a detail-oriented person. And in the excitement of entrepreneurship and growth, you can find yourself subscribing to some kind of website or something or spending money on you know, various things for the office that you just don't need to spend. And for me, it was enormously helpful to get an outside perspective to actually go through and effectively audit um, the entire operation of the business, all the expenses, everything we spent money on, and help me to assess whether we actually needed this thing. And so I would really recommend that. The third thing that really worked for me is to track the profitability of all the projects that we did. Now, depending on the kind of business you have, this might be the different types of products that you have or, or something else. But because I had a consulting business, we made money doing consultancy projects. And what we did was assess the profitability of every project that we did and every kind of project that we did. So, for example, we would look at the contribution of each project. We would look at the project expenses, we would look at the fee, and we would look at the margin or contribution of each project itself to the business. And that enabled us to say, well, why are we doing these types of projects? They make us no money at all when we could be doing those types of projects. One of the things that I learned is just how dangerous big projects can be. When you get a big project, you think it's great because you're going to have a big project and it's not easy. Actually, big projects, um, I think, can be very difficult to track the profitability of and they can be a lot harder to make good money on because there are different expectations from the client and so forth. Um, and so they're often one-offs or unique things. So, so I would say, you know, especially if you're involved in any kind of consultancy work, big projects handle with care. But the main point here being track the profitability of everything that you do, whether it's projects or products or any other way in which you can break up the activities of the company and look at what is making money and what isn't. And I guess the last point which is associated with that is that the only way you can track the profitability of what you're doing is if you're measuring everything. And I talked about this a little bit with, with regard to sales, but it's true of operations as well. You have to measure everything that you're doing in order to know what is profitable and what is not. So I had a consultancy business and we tracked all the time that we spent on every single project, on the different stages of the project. So we were able to say, 
where are we losing money and where are we making money? Is it in these projects or those projects? And is it in these stages of the projects and so forth? So you've got to measure everything in order to be able to, to really see what's going on in the business. So I hope that's helpful. I wish you a hugely successful and profitable business. Good luck with your entrepreneurship. Thank you so much for listening.